Good morning, friends. Our devos today will be taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, a passage that I think uh, a lot of us have, have heard or read before in the past, even probably heard sermons on uh, in the past. And hopefully it will be refreshing to you as we revisit, revisit this again. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, Jesus says, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we see here a call of welcome from Jesus for all those from all of us today who are feeling heavy laden. And he claims that he can give us rest. Well, let's first talk about the kind of heavy ladenness Jesus is referring to here. And the kind of rest Jesus is referring to here. It's not primarily a physical rest uh, from exercising. Uh, it's not heaviness that we carry with our bodies because we've had a long day at work. Um, the kind of rest Jesus is claiming to give us here is a rest for the soul, uh, a deeper rest. Um, and I think, therefore, the kind of heaviness Jesus is claiming we all have is the heaviness of the soul. That's caused, the scripture says, by the reality of sin in our hearts, meaning there's something deep inside of us uh, that tells us we are not who we were originally designed to be by the Creator. Uh, by experience, we know that we are not who we need to be. Oftentimes, we're not even who we want to be, as low as, as that expectation may be for ourselves. Um, I still fail it, oftentimes. And, and that causes a heaviness of the soul. There's something broken between who we are meant to be, who we are morally, and therefore, our, our relationship with the Creator isn't quite where it needs to be. And I think we all sense that. I think we all we all know that, and it's causing a heaviness. And we try to psychologize it away, you know. We try to um, explain it away. Uh, we try to even moralize it away, meaning we try to do good things and do religious things and heap up good deeds, hope, hoping that if our goodness outweighs our badness, we'll find some kind of rest of soul. But I think we all know it doesn't quite work like that that heaviness can't seem to go away. And I think what Jesus is saying here in verse 29, that the answer is to come to him. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Now, Jesus here is referring, of course, to what he will do, and that is get on a cross and take all the heaviness uh, that we should experience and we should bear rightfully because of our sin upon himself. Uh, and by dying on the cross, that's the good news of, of Christianity, of the gospel, of the Bible. That our God came down to die on a cross so that our sins may be taken away. Uh, so that our burdens uh, can, be, can be taken off of us and, and we no longer bear the consequences, uh, the eternal consequences of our sin. And this is what Jesus is saying, come, come to me, uh, I am gentle and lowly in heart. And here we see the reason as to why Jesus went on that cross for us because he's gentle and lowly in heart. Let's first talk about gentle and lowly. Gentle there, I think the, the meaning of that is is meekness, um, meaning that he's he's not trigger happy. <laughs> you know, when, you know, you have these relationships sometimes when you say something that's a little bit off, the person just kind of loses it, right? He gets angry or she gets mad. And uh, Jesus is saying, I'm not like that. I'm not trigger happy. I am patient beyond your wildest imaginations. And also he's lowly. So he's gentle and lowly. Lowly here means more um, accessible. He's accessible. It, you can get to him. He wants to be, uh, he wants to get to you. He wants to be accessible. So he's, he's not trigger happy and he's accessible. But here's the key. He says he's like this in his heart. Now it's an interesting book actually called Gentle and Lowly by Dave Ortland, good book to pick up. And in the first chapter, he reveals how in all the four Gospels, Jesus says a lot about who he is th with theological terms, right? I am the vine, I am uh, the shepherd, I'm the way, the truth, the life, right? I'm uh, the Messiah who's to come and been predicted throughout the Old Testament. But there's only one place in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, where Jesus talks about who he is in his heart. Who he is in his disposition, in his character, in his attitude, in his, in his, in his, in his character. And this is it. 
the, he could have said a lot of things. He could have said, I am powerful and mighty. He could have said, I am, um, I am capable and, uh, and a disciplined, you know, which would all have been true. But out of all the true things he could have said about himself, he chose these two things. I am gentle and lowly in heart. And when the Bible says the heart, it's referring to the very core of the person. It's not just the feelings. It's, it's the DNA. It's the, it's the makeup. It's the very nature of who you are that doesn't really change. And Jesus is saying he's gentle and lowly in heart. He's like this in his very core forever. Um, that's why he went on the cross. When somebody is uh, patient and accessible in heart, when they see people who are heavy laden, they are drawn to do something about it. Uh, they are they are magnetized toward it to help and care uh, in whatever way. And this is exactly what God did through Christ. He saw we are helpless sheep. He saw we are burdened down with our sin, with the stubborn habits that can't seem to go away, with our anger issues, with our inability to forgive with our forever suspicious manner towards even the best of wills that people have. And, and, and he cares, and he loves, and he pursued, which is why he went on the cross. And this is where we'll find rest for our souls. This is where we know um, we're forgiven, we're washed clean. And in verse 30, Jesus says, when you do that, when you come to him, um, you'll find an easiness of yoke, right? Yoke is something that you would put on animals to, to carry um, the, you know, the, the equipment that, that kind of grapes uh, the ground to make it uh, better for farming, right? You put it on the cow and, or on the animal and they walk. Uh, and Jesus' yoke, he's saying, is easy. So there's still a yoke involved, but instead of something that burdens you down it's more like a life jacket around your neck that actually is light and lifts you up and that's the picture of the kind of life that we will have jesus claiming here once we believe in the truth claim that jesus truly is who he claims to be god in the flesh who came to die for us now our sins not partially but the whole has been paid for by the cross through christ and we bear it no more and, and when we believe in that, when we accept that, when we live our lives based on that predisposition, based on that worldview, which is what faith is, um, we're going to be yoked to Christ, yes. But the kind of life we experience will be a life of freedom. Now, and I think this is one place where the, uh, the Christian walk is often talked about as self-denial, which it is, don't get me wrong. Um, it's talked about in terms of carrying your cross, denying yourself, you know, beating up your body and making you your slave, and um, all, all those things, which are, those were all biblical phrases and, and, and motifs we see about the Christian life. But I think there's another part of the Christian life that often gets neglected, and that is the concept of freedom. It's a concept of this is how you should live as a free person. These are imprisoning rules. These are instructions of how to live in freedom. Um, it's interesting, before God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments, he first explained to them, I am the Lord your God who's freed you out of the slavery of Egypt. You're not enslaved anymore. You're free. And therefore, then he gives the Ten Commandments. This is how you should live as free people. So when God says, do not commit adultery, you know, the, 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 the feel there isn't just, don't commit adultery, like deny yourself. And no, it's more, look, this is how you should live um, as a free person, is, is to is to have certain behaviors. Um, when you tell a fish you can't get out of water, you're not imprisoning the fish to water, you're, you're helping the fish be as free as it can be. So that's what we find in Christ. Um, forgiveness of sin, but also instructions of how to live freely uh, in the way we were meant to, to be originally. So I hope this has been encouraging for you. It's almost 10 minutes, so I can't go over my time. Um, if you're heavy laden, um, he can give you rest. Remember, your sins have been paid for, not in part, but the whole. So now, continue to live in him as, as free men and women, um, beloved.